Look at us. How did I get to this point? Better yet, how did we get to this point of pure vulnerability? Ten hand-selected Frederick Douglass Global Fellows, all from different parts of America, uniting and growing together. Something I thought was impossible to do, especially with a group of strangers. Just a month ago, I was leaving my city of Charlotte, representing my school, Fayetteville State University, to get the opportunity to explore a country I thought I would only see in textbooks. I intended to explore all the UK had to offer, the London Bridge, Big Ben, double-decker buses, and even the telephone booths. Clearly, my mindset of all the UK had to offer wasn't as vast as the country itself has shown me, which isn't just pretty sights to take pictures of, but rather an experience I did not suspect to have. The political debate of the poppy, police not carrying guns around, freedom fighters in Brixton, building the community, the peace walls in Ireland. Exploring London was only half of the experience. Exploring ourselves was the other. In class, we discuss the power our names hold. Mine, Chinoidu, and Ibo, meaning God owns life. A reminder of fate and how God plays a role in it all. I was sure God, or fate, had played a role in uniting 10 unique people together. This group hug was composed from our past, our collective struggles, and lack or shared of privilege. I broke down my walls by accepting my past how it was. It wasn't picture perfect due to my lack of privilege, but with hard work my mom instilled in me, I gained the privilege to have scholarships, go off to college, and explore a country I could only dream of being in. From that point on, the way I view myself has changed, and I've gained a new found family. Look at us, again, weeks later, in the same space as before, Everything coming full circle with the first inaugural ceremony of the first 10 Frederick Douglass Global Fellows. We had a personal conversation with Nettie Washington Douglass, the heir of both Booker T. Washington and Frederick Douglass. She, a descendant, might have given us the most accurate account of who Frederick Douglass was and what it might have felt like to be in his presence. She told us about how he was abandoned by his grandmother at his slave master's plot and never to see her again, to how he was a self-made scholar and profound orator. Eventually, he made enough money to purchase his own freedom. With all he gained, he didn't settle for his personal freedom, but continued to fight for all of his people in the same predicament he was in. She also instilled in us how we are the first cohort of fellows, and we are to set the standard for cohorts to follow. She ended with, you only can be first once. So what do I do with Nettie Washington Douglas tell me we set the standard? What do I do with the privilege I've gained from this experience? I will look to my past, invest in those who are or were in the same shoes I was in, give to the community that helped me, developed me, and presented me the opportunity to be here. Share knowledge and culture with my people, because to live for yourself, you'll live in vain. But to live for others, you'll live again.